Hey guys, and down here, this is going to be my chapter review to My Hero Academia, Book No Hero Academia 241. I think it was called Answer the Interviews. Now, this was kind of a welcome change from, you know, My Villain Academia. Though we do slow down and there's a lot less shit going on. So, you know, in terms of just hype and pure theatrics and things like that, um, this chapter wasn't really all there, but considering how hype and how amazing the My v my Villain Academia little mini-arc thing was, which I really enjoyed, by the way. Um, I think this chapter was... It wasn't the best, but, you know, it's a good introduction into where we're going to go to next. So, the chapter starts off with a camera being aimed at both Bakugo and Todoroki, and they're being interviewed, basically, for, um, for the feats that they've committed uh, just prior to the My Villain Academia stuff. Um, and as you can expect, Bakugo isn't very good with interviews. He's just very pissed off, very angry, and <laughs> Totoroki's just very stale, vacant, and he's just like, yeah, everything's good. Uh, so they kind of get into an argument with, with Totoroki just being like, yeah, we were we were very close during our supplementary classes, and Bakugo's like, no, we weren't. Like, what the hell type of system do you have in your head? We're not, we're not friends or anything like that. And this is all going on while, like, Ochako, Deku, and Ida just looking on, like, what the hell's going on? Like, these guys are... They're really messing up their interviews right now. So, going into the bulk of the chapter, we see uh, we see Class One A just laughing their asses off of Bakugo's. Um, they basically cut half cut him out of the interview and focus mainly on Shoto, uh, just because of Bakugo's kind of volatility. And uh, Sero and Kaminari are just laughing their asses off at the fact that Bakugo got cut off. Deku's just there, like, um, he's getting further and further away from All Might. Basically, everyone's just kind of weighing in on what they feel um, about the interview between Shoto and, and Bakugo. Um, some news outlet says that, you know, although they may be a tad uns unsophisticated, Shoto and, Todo and Bakugo, um, as provisional heroes, they're, they're clearly very competent. Hopefully, they'll become full-fledged heroes as quickly as they can, especially with issues like the the Daker tragedy, um, which nine days have passed since then, um, and the story that they're being told is a mere twenty people were brought to the Daker city and they brought it to ruin in only fifty minutes. So, if the time scale at least is correct, because I don't think that part would have changed so much, in fifty minutes the League of Villains did what they did with, and then obviously Giganto Machia and and um, Sh Shigaraki's kind of an unleashed power. But the, the scale of the destruction in 50 minutes from the League of Villains, mostly Shigaraki to be fair, was greater than even Kamino, which was which was the that, that was the fault and that was the cause of um the cause that was the fault of um uh, all for one. So the fact that this had greater destruction than that is crazy. Um but there were fewer casualties because it was a rural area. Um and then we go to what the Daker City citizens have to say and you know, there's there's a bunch of different types of um, people weighing in on how the situation should have been addressed. Uh, basically, a lot of them are saying that the people who saved Daker, they shouldn't be to blame. But what we should be uh, disputing is the current system and how it's unreliable in terms of heroes and how they get there and how many heroes are around the area. Um, someone said hindsight is basically beautiful. I'm just like, yeah, cool. Um, other people are saying heroes did a really good job. Someone says this is a turning point in... Um, you know, heroics and things like that. Um, but it looks like, and I'm not sure if this was just my lack of understanding, but it looks like people were just generally okay um, towards heroes and have essentially transitioned to encouraging the, the heroes and the jobs that they're doing. Uh, especially after, you know, the whole, that kid when he was like, can't you see in the Chaco and actually um, Mina, they're talking about how, you know, that kid shouted at, um, the people around Endeavor saying, you know, how he's the number one hero, how he's trying to protect their asses and stuff like that. So then randomly, Mount Lady runs into the <laughs> into the room for some reason. Like, she, she seems to be some sort of, like, you know, the, the symbol of beauty, even though she's right next to, what's her name, Midnight, is it? And um, she runs in talking about how, you know, the heroes have the wind in their sails again, but if you flip the situation on the other side of the coin people are actually feeling a sense of urgency. You know, they, they are a little bit um, shaken by what's been going on, especially with how uh, violent the acts of criminals has been, of, of villains has been. Um, so she's there with her ass on screen. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, 
that's fine with me. But the, she, she basically mentions that the people are yearning for a true hero to emerge. And one where the hero isn't as caught up in showbiz, where, you know, he's not doing his hero duties. Uh, which is funny because Minette's just there like, yo, wait a sec, who invited this chick? She's the one who's been like most tainted by show business than anybody, any of the other heroes ever. So she's there as a guest lecturer, essentially, and she's going to be talking to you or speaking to um, the class about media and how they can handle media. So what are they doing? They'll be they're practicing hero interviews, which is, you know, funny because, you know, Bakugan and Todoroki can't handle interviews very well. So we then have her interviewing Shoto. He's very kind of blunt, very... Um, he can't take any semblance of simile or metaphor. He just takes everything literally. So she's there like, what type of hero are you trying to become? And he's like, you know, I hope everyone's at ease and stuff like that. And she's like, oh, you know, that's wonderful. If a hunk like you came to save me, my heart would burst out my chest. And he's just there like, is there something wrong with your heart? And I was like, oh my God. She's she's obviously like being thrown off by this, like thinking he's cute and like seeing her, how literal he is. But then as the kind of interview goes on, She's there saying, like, if you if you can smile while you're being interviewed, you know, ladies would be dropping left, right, and center. And he's just there in shock, like, they're going to be dying every time I smile. So she's had enough. She tells him to get the hell off stage. And um, this is where, actually, what's his face? Um, I've forgotten his name. The the eagle guy, or the falcon guy, Tokage, what's his name? It's something Tokage, I think. But he's, he's talking about why would they want to demonstrate their super moves, which Mountain Lady asks... Uh, Todoroki to do she's like demonstrate your super move or one of your signature moves so that we can see what it looks like and I was I was also of the mindset like why would you want to show that that's surely that's not something you'd want to show but she actually mentions a few good points as to why you would want to show something like that uh, so she says first off not everyone out there knows who you guys are uh, people will want to know what you're capable of how what the things you can do so the reasons for this are if, if there's a team out there that you're teaming up with impromptu, like very, very randomly in the middle of a disaster situation, at least they'll know some of what you're capable of doing so they can team up with you and be able to like combine moves more effectively, more uh, quickly. Um, but also it's, uh, it sends out a, a warning for villains who realize that, yo, shit, this guy's actually really sick. And it's for earning the trust of the people uh, so that they, they actually entrust their lives to you. And... And also so that they're aware of what you can do, where they need to be when you're about to bust out. Uh, so basically everyone is so familiar with All Might. There were chan the chances were that nobody would be standing in front of All Might like an idiot when he was about to unleash like a Delaware smash or something like that. Things like that. It's more for safety, more for people knowing what they're around, what, they, what the heroes are capable of. And so that they can form impromptu teams and things like that. Um, so she's, she basically says there's significant meaning in shouting out some sort of signature move or super super move names and stuff like that uh which surprises me that he's just like yo I, I thought she was just paying attention to the camera and it looks like she's actually paying attention to her job as a hero so we then see the other kids going through um their kind of interviews kind of their staged interviews you see either he's very sincere you see yao yorozu she's confident stuff like that you see ochako she's kind of very light-hearted you see um yeah, what's his name the blackbird dude <laughs> forgot his name and he's just very edgy as usual you see um uh, kishi kishi what's his name you know harden dude and he's he's just very kind of very very courageous i thought i actually liked this one he's like no blood will be shed so long as you're behind me i was like oh okay this guy's pretty cool everyone's going through their thing and and then you have Bakugo, who's just like very, very shouty, very aggressive. Uh, some, once again, Mountain Lady's just like, you know, you're a little bit better when you're alone, but you just don't get along with, you know, with anyone else. And you just don't interview very well. So I'm, um, <laughs> what's her name? Um, Midnight actually makes a point here. She's like, maybe he should actually get lessons from Aizawa and how to avoid the media because he doesn't, he just doesn't sit well with talking to people. He's very, very uh well i wouldn't say narcissistic but he's just incredibly bad at dealing with in other individuals so then we see deku who's being asked <laughs> in his interview just like oh i saw your, your fight how did you do out there and all that stuff he's very very blocky very uptight very uh very frightened on stage he's, he definitely suffers from some sort of stage fright and i, I love the fact that um the hardening dude what's his name kishi something uh he's just like whoa he can use hardening just like me i thought that was a, that was a good roast actually i, I like that 
um, and then he he does what most people will do. They'll they'll either freeze up and not say very much, or as soon as they can latch onto some questions, they'll spew out all of the information they got on there. So she asks him about like, oh, your your moves look like this, but inspired by All Might, do you look up to him? And he just spews out a whole paragraph as to why his moves are inspired by them what types of moves he has and then midnight actually makes mention of you know come to think of it we we'd heard we'd seen your uh your quirk had been making progress uh, during that outburst the other day how has that come along and apparently it's been a week since that incident um what's his name deku's been working both mentally and using uh mentally using imagery and stuff like that and physical training since then he's he's realized that you know it's a power that was locked away but that doesn't mean that it's gone away it's still there and the fact that it's locked suggests that it can be unlocked so he can use it and just like he did when he first had to learn to use one for all he's he needs to use learn to use it iteratively so use it at one percent two percent five percent you know very very slowly slowly draw out the power that's available to him so everybody's kind of just there waiting trying to see if he's going to use this quirk and then you see this lightning flying out of him as, as he's about to use his quirk and then you see from his actual the, he has these kind of knuckle duster holes on his um on his glove and from there a small black whip pops out and i was like oh shit, he can already use it but it literally lives for about a tenth of a second and it only pops out about maybe at most 15 centimeters before it expires and it just dissipates into black smoke and he's there super happy about like yeah i can finally do this and that lady in midnight's like what the heck was that that was bullshit so um and then we see the headmaster of ua speaking to all might and <laughs> all might is just like the headmaster's like you still haven't slept all might's like no i'm good i'm good sleep isn't an issue and all might's face is just completely gone it's a triangle at this point with his eyes sagging he looks horrible but you can see what he's writing up is uh he's writing up the generations of successes of one for all their quirks and essentially he's writing up notes for midoriya for deku um to understand the quirks that had been um, that have been put into one for all for him and so that he can understand how to utilize them who you who utilized them originally who they were things like that i assume um so it's essentially a handbook of learning one for all and all the quirks within it for deku which is awesome but then at the end we're told that they'll be restarting the kids will be restarting their internships so they're going to be moving into different heroes areas and hopefully we'll see where that goes but i thought it's a decent ish chapter uh kind of just went back to the you know the lack lackadaisical lives of the kids but hopefully moving on it'll be more entertaining so let me know what you guys thought of the chapter let me know what you guys thought of this review like comment subscribe all of that good stuff and i'll see you guys in a bit